INI intermediate school teacher and single mother has just written a book called Candy Canes and Coke. It's a raw and emotional personal story written by Momi Robbins, a woman who finds redemption after suffering abuse from her husband and then turning that abuse onto her cocaine addicted 14 year old son. And joining us this morning is author Momi Robbins with her story. Good, Momi, good morning, Momi, and thank you good so morning, much for joining Maya. us. Thank you for allowing me to share my story. Absolutely. Now, your story starts off with the abuse uh, from your now ex husband. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you talk about how he nearly pushed you off a cliff on the White and Night Coast, and mm -hmm. it's, it's a pretty raw account. And it when you, you said that when you first started writing your story, it was at first a rant against your ex husband but then it started to change. Why is that? Yeah, I think that when I first started writing it, I wanted to just tell the world what a jerk he was and, and every nasty thing that he's ever done to me. And that's really where I was coming from. I was bitter and angry. And, and really, I had so much support from my mom and my sisters and my friends. And it just, I still was stuck in, in, that, in that rut. And mm -hmm. I didn't know how to get myself out. So I started writing. And um, what I started because... Like I said, I just wanted to tell the world what he had done to me, but I realized through the writing that I played a very, very big role in the dysfunction that we were living, mm -hmm. you know, and what the writing did was it, it showed me where I was, and, and when I was honest with myself, I, I didn't like what I saw. Yeah. And so you became an abuse victim, and you actually turned into the abuser. Yes. Uh, some pretty uh, emotional accounts about you uh, abusing it's okay, Mommy. It, uh, about you abusing your own 14-year-old son who was addicted to cocaine. And, and from that title, you talk about hitting him with candy cane decorations during <laughs> Christmas time. Can you read a passage from that book? I just want to say, at that point in my life, I blamed, I blamed everyone else. You know, and when he did that, I took it like it was against me as a parent. I didn't realize that he was crying for help. Mm -hmm. And so really, before I read the passage, I had caught, I had taken him for a drug test and he had promised, you know, that he it would be clean and and um, it, it wasn't. It came back and, and it was it was positive. And so this is just after me finding out that, that it was positive. I was sitting on him as he was curled into the corner of the sofa with his arms protecting his face. My tears were soaking his head, his tears were soaking the pillow, and I remember making a mental note of the image, but still I couldn't stop. Kia was mouthing words, but I didn't hear them. Out of nowhere, a freak and lone breeze came through the window, lifting the curtain up over my face. The breeze startled me because the night was still and muggy in anticipation of the rainfall. The curtain fell on my head and over my face and stayed there. In an effort to get the curtain off of my face, I swung the cane, but it became tangled in the curtain. God, God was watching me and he was disgusted. I realized at that moment with the curtain still partially entangling the cane, I was the abuser. I was the sick, destructive, pathetic person who needed help. I was abusing my son with the cane intended to decorate our home with the spirit of Christmas. Momi, I'm, it is so emotional and I know it is still raw even though it was a few years ago, but you actually found redemption and salvation. How did you find that? And, and I know that you're trying to send a positive message to your students today. How are you doing that? I think that I'm trying to be honest with myself and with my students. And I think that that is something that we as older women need to do. You know, they need to realize, especially as girls, that or the, the girls that, you know, they struggle with the same issues that we did, you know, and if we're open and honest with them and let them know that, you know, we've been there, it provides support for them. So as much as I'm trying to, you know, get my test scores up and, mm -hmm. and um, teach them, you know, academics, I really feel that before even that, I need to let them know, you know, I need to make sure that they believe in themselves and, and they don't, you know, go down that path that, that I went down. And unfortunately, I see that happening a lot with my 13-year-old, you know, girls. And, you know, they're deleting all the boys' numbers mm -hmm. off of their phones because their boyfriends, you know, don't, don't want them, you know, to be in contact with other boys. And it's just, I, I feel like we need to keep talking and not enough people are talking. So I'm hoping that what this does is, is, is help young girls. Well, Momi, you are certainly an inspiration and a voice for people who have no voice. So thank, thank you, you so much for thank joining you, us Maya. this morning. Thank you for having me. Again, the book is called Candy Canes and Coke, and it's in bookstores now. And don't forget, if you'd like to watch this interview again with Momi Robbins, you can head over to the morning section of our website, kitv.com. It is 618.